Hey guys, welcome to Watches and Whiskey, number three, right? That's right. We're doing pretty good with this. I'm getting a lot of good responses from you guys, so obviously you guys like what me and Adrian are doing together. Well, this is Watches and Whiskey. I figured we'd kill off this bottle of Blue Label, yeah. which we started on <laughs> earlier this week, so uh, cheers, Adrian. Cheers. What are your thoughts on Blue Label overall? You know what? It's one of those uh, quote-unquote high whisk, high-end whiskeys, because it is not cheap. <laughs> Uh, and, but a lot of people either love it or hate it. I know you're not a big fan. I actually am a fan it's of It's not this. that I'm not a big fan. I think it tastes Gross. great. But the first time that I tried Blue Label, I <laughs> almost spit it out because it's way hair. too big of a Gross. bowl. That's Gross, many Gross hairs ago. on your chest. Well, speaking of Blue Label, I'm wearing the highly collectible and beautiful blue sky oh, you, dweller. You're just hyping the, the highly collectible. And be- I'll highly go with beautiful. I'll, I guess That's I'll go beautiful. with highly collectible as well. well. I got a little bit of surprise for you. What's my least favorite paddock? Aquanaut? Yeah. Guess what I'm wearing. Ladies and gentlemen, an Aquanaut. Uh, it's start, like the rose gold, it's starting to grow on me a little I bit. I told you, yeah. I mean, I know you love the Aquanaut. I'm not, I've never been a big fan. I don't fan. like the steel one. But the, the brown, but the brown cool. rose gold chocolate, I gotta say, is growing on me. I think Absolutely. I think if I were to pick one up for me to wear wear, I would probably go with the green. How comfortable is that watch though? Oh, it's super comfortable. Yeah. It's super comfortable. It's got a nice little weight to it too because yep. it is gold, gold but it yep. is super comfortable. But anyway, that's not, we're not gonna talk about paddocks. We're gonna talk about Jacob and Company. Oh yeah? The Supreme and Jacob and Co collab. On, on a signature Jacob & Co. piece from the 90s, i.e. The, the five time zone, pretty much the watch that probably revolutionized the industry when it comes to hip hop watches, this was the watch to own. Oh yeah. So the Supreme & Jacob & Co. time zone watch comes with either 40 millimeters or 47 millimeter sizes. The stainless steel four time zone watch features a lacquer dial with a custom logo inlay. Obviously the box logo from Supreme. And then a changeable stainless steel bezel set with 51 white diamonds, about three carats, an alligator strap, blah, 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 stainless steel logo buckle. This is a new take on one of Jacob's signature pieces from the 90s, retail 14,000, sold out completely, and now on StockX used for 17 to $20,000. Well, let me tell you something, first of all. You know, Jacob went back into his factory, found his old ass parts. Yeah. <laughs> because, how about this? Jacob still has these five time zones, yes. you know, because they kind of like died overnight, if you remember. Like, they, they were they, they were, were it. The, they were the hottest thing. I remember every and then, and then And then we were offered to close out 11 cents on a dollar. Remember that? <laughs> so I guarantee you, he took some of his older pieces, just made a new dial. So I'm going to call an expert. Your but, son. Yes, my you son. I, I told you about my son before, about his successful sneaker business that he's been doing since he was 14. He dwells a lot in Supreme. I don't think me and you know enough about it, so let's call him in. Yeah. Marcus. What up, big yeah. boss? <laughs> Welcome to the show. The okay, supreme I'm dream. Sure we're doing watches and whiskey with Adrian. You're too young to drink whiskey, but cheers to you. Uh, we're talking about the Supreme and Jacob and Co. collab. What are your thoughts on the watches? <laughs> I like the fact there's a Supreme banner right there. <laughs> no, that's not a banner. That's his, that's his uh, that's curtain. curtain. Well, uh, you, might as well, you, might as well, you might as well show the rest of your room and all the other Supreme stuff hanging out there. Let's see. What do you got over there? Well, yeah, we got yeah. the we have the mat, we have the baseball mask, we have that. We got that. We we got we got a little, little something going on around here, Supreme. Okay, so tell me about this watch quickly because we don't have that kind of time. What are your thoughts? So, initial thoughts on the drop when they did drop, I was not for the watch at all. I mean, the high retails kind of will turn me off originally. The forty-seven millimeter one retailed for fourteen thousand, and the forty millimeter one retailed for twelve thousand. And I talked to you about it once, to get your advice. You told me that probably shouldn't go for it because most Jacob and Co. watches trade really um, under retail. So I passed personally. I mean, we felt like I felt like the the, best, the risk wasn't worth the, the return. That's what I felt like. Yeah, and that's I agreed with that. And after the release, I looked and there wasn't many sales. I mean, not much interest in this, honestly. The watch itself is pretty ugly in my opinion. A lot of people agree with that too. And so a few sold for over retail, but it wasn't much, really profitable. I mean, you can make couple thousand maybe and it's not like you can find a buyer for these so my opinion would you think would you think that the starting price point is what kind of makes it not attractive because uh although supreme essentially was a skateboarding brand or whatever way before it became hype and i'm like and then they put it on louis vuitton and it sold through the roof right louis vuitton is a little different than jacob and co anything louis vuitton drops will sell well, so so at at the end of the day, do you know of any of your peers or any guys that you do business with that have bought and sold that watch or not? I know a lot of people that sold pre orders because it was easy to, you know, backdoor. They only made so many, um And we don't and we don't know how many they made, right? They never tell you how many they are made. They never they never tell you how much they make. But like high, most high ticket items like this for Supreme I know are limited to anywhere from I'd say twenty to a hundred pieces. Oh twenty like, pieces big, should be high ticket items like these. So they are pretty limited, but I, I did see a lot of people 
going around. Like I had a bunch of people call me. They were like, are you interested? Do you need uh, pre-orders for these? So they were pretty easy to secure because they knew, Supreme knew they weren't going to get a lot of interest in them. So they backdoored a lot of these, obviously, as they do with most high ticket items. But Yeah, like that, um, like that uh, pinball machine me and you try to buy? <laughs> listen, there's, there's, it's, it's impossible. Why do you think before it even before it even gets to the store? From a Supreme standpoint, what is their reasoning to partner with somebody like Jacob and Co on this release? Why put their name? Oh, can, can I can I answer that? Because they made a f ton of money. This watch cost them a thousand dollars, and this oh. is probably most likely this this these watches were most likely watches that he already had in stock. Right, but what if, yeah, but what if, what if as a brand these don't go well? And but, they and, but and they odds tank. are anything Supreme. I mean, exactly. Yes, Guess what? but but. These, these watches sold out within, I want to say, five minutes. So Supreme doesn't care. They're making their money. It's the it's the resellers that aren't making the money. You think, you think, you think all of them went to resellers? I mean, I, I really haven't seen someone who literally put this watch on their wrist yet. Like, I have no clue. Would you? No, no shot. I didn't think so. Marcus, I want to thank you for your time. Yes. I, pr I appreciate the insight. I'll, I'll see you at home. Bye. Thank Later. You. Now. Speaking of Jacob McCoy, so look, uh, he thought it was a dog to begin with. He still thinks it's a dog. I he didn't put his money into it, and Marcus is not afraid to invest his money. He didn't think that it was a good investment to begin with. And for all you guys out there that I wanted to pick up that Jacob McCoy, let me be flat out. If one of you guys out there bought it two to three years from now, if you're going to bring it to me, I don't see myself paying more than $2,500 for that watch. What about you, Adrian? 1,000%. But speaking of Jacob, I do take my hat off to Jacob for some of the innovative stuff he's Hard. done over the last few years. I mean, some of the watches he's made, the jewelry. Astronomias. Well, speaking right. of astronomias, here's one for you. Swedish explorer and adventure activist Johan Ernst Nilsson recently climbed the Himalayas with Jacob and co-astronomia strapped around his wrist. Despite altitude of 20,000 feet, temperature as frigid as minus 22 degrees Fahrenheit, that's freaking cold. What is that in Celsius? Hey Siri, how many degrees is minus 22 Fahrenheit in Celsius? What do you care about Celsius for? Minus 22 Fahrenheit is minus 30 Celsius. I have been in temperatures of minus 40 Celsius, Siberia. You weren't born yet. No. So that's pretty damn cold, <laughs> let me tell you something. Uh, you know what they say, you spit in the freezes? That's actually a bullshit. It doesn't, it doesn't freeze in the air, but it will freeze on the ground almost instantaneously. Taking a leak, not a good idea. Some things may fall off. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> the astronomer performed perfectly, inspired by his rugged nature and the need to address the impact of climate change he witnessed while traveling to 172 countries. Nilsson is partnered with the Swiss watchmaker on a new version of this house classic, the Astronomia Everest. Nilsson explained, the Astronomia is the only watch I've ever had people ask me about while I'm wearing it. So we'll be starting conversation that hopefully will lead to change. This special edition will spread the word about the fragility of our planet. The Jacob Eco Astronomia Everest package is available for $884,800. Every piece comes with a rock from Mount Everest and a trip to Mount Everest by helicopter with Johan Nilsson himself. I mean... Total gimmick. But for good cause. <laughs> I mean, obviously yeah. this guy is an advocate for saving our planet and global warming. And what does the Jacob nature. Astronomia Turbo have to do with that? Well, that's that's Jacob getting his name out there. Yeah. I don't know if the Astronomia Turbo fits the bill, though. Well, that's exactly what I'm saying. Like, let's say other high-end brands, Richard Meal, which I always like to use, uh, Nadal wears his watch while he plays tennis. You know, it can absorb certain impact or a certain Formula One race car drivers, Romain Grosjean. I mean, bro, the fact that this thing would stood a climb to Mount Everest. I, 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 I'm, I'm trying to understand is what the, what's the, that watch, if, in case it just you doesn't, guys don't it doesn't know, fit. It's humongous and not wearable at all. I mean, the fact that he climbed the mountain is pretty incredible. I don't even know if I could wear it for a day without breaking the glass because the thing <laughs> sticks up like this. That so, is true. Kudos, kudos to uh, Jacob for withstanding Mount Everest, but I, I just don't see the play here. Like, it doesn't measure temperature. It doesn't, like, let you know, Alti know altitude. altitude or anything like that. Question for you. If money was no object, yeah. how much of a role with the fact that you get to take a trip with Johan Nilsson himself in a helicopter yeah. to Mount Everest, and you get a rock from Mount Everest, how much of a role would that play for you in the purchase of this watch? Zero, I'm deathly afraid of heights. Oh, well, for me, I think the bigger <laughs> role, I think the bigger role would be the fact that this is for good cost. Me and Charity, we go hand in hand, you know, I always love to help Cheers where, to I that. Where, where it goes. So I think that's a nice gimmick. My, I take my hat off to Jacob. I think this is a great idea. I think it's for a great cause. I'm, I would be curious how much of that money of each watch sold would actually go towards, uh, you know, preserving our planet and things of that nature. Yeah. So anyway, on to some sad, sad news. All right, uh, we're gonna pay tribute to Diego Maradona. Okay, I mean this guy was, in my opinion, again, 
my, it's really even not even my generation. It's probably our parents' generation. He, he was God. He was it. Him along with Pele are yep. probably two of the best soccer players that ever played the game, that ever lived. And it is unfortunately Messi that... Huh? Better than Messi and Ronaldo? You, you can't, you can't Ken, compare, you can't compare to these, these, are, these are legends. It's like comparing Jordan and LeBron. Can Absolutely. Physicality and change but soccer. But that's not what this is Today. about. I actually wanted to raise a glass to Diego. May he rest in peace. Uh, we can play maybe a, a little... Uh, Sizzler that my guys put together about his greatest moments. One of the things that's worth mentioning about Diego is outside of being uh, one of the greatest soccer players that ever played the game, uh, we're talking about a guy that was out of shape, overweight, uh, probably one of the biggest personalities that played the game. Party. Party guy. Yes, that guy liked the party, that's for sure. He's always worn two watches on his wrist. Do you know why? No. <laughs> because one of the watches always showed his home time, Argentina, and the other watch he used to show uh, the time where he physically is. Well, that that's was, called that a GMT. Was, I know, but his thing was always two watches. <laughs> and and you when he got to deal with Hublot later in life, he's always wore two Hublots as well. They, is, is his Maradona GMT? Uh, well, that would probably make sense. I'm not sure if they actually did. The, I don't know if the Maradona uh, Hublot is actually a GMT. But, uh, again, this guy was a wild child. He fired guns at reporters. I'm Philadelphia would love him. Uh, I shot at reporters. Exactly. Love exactly. Me. <laughs> exactly. I mean, it's... Uh, <laughs> He passed away November 25th at the age of 60. I, I say it's way, way, way yeah. too soon. Uh, this brings up one quick topic I wanted to talk about, and that's jumping on a bandwagon, right? Mm -hmm. If you remember when Kobe Bryant passed away, yep. I go on Corona 24 immediately, you know, a couple of days later, all his Hublots, yep. uh, people were listening for a quarter million dollars, for $200,000. They were jumping on a bandwagon of a tragedy. At the time that happened, I actually had a Hublot. I still have it. Uh, a Hublot, uh, the one he made with the wine company, I forget what it's called, right. for Kobe right, Bryant, right. right? It's the one that comes with the cork yeah. opener and all that stuff. I actually like the color. Yeah, like the wine uh, color. it's like a purplish color. Yeah. So the thing with that is is that uh, not for a second did I think about, oh, you know what, let me take this, what was a $15,000 watch and put it up there for $80,000 because I think that karma is a bitch and jumping on a bandwagon or a tragedy is bad. And the same thing has happened with the Maradona watches. Now, if you go on Corona 24, you see them up there listed for some ridiculous amounts of money. Uh, you on our uh, chats, I, I saw a couple of you right away post looking to buy a Hublot Diego Maradona, looking to buy a Hublot. You know, not as obviously not as many as Kobe though. Like right after Kobe died, everybody started looking for his watches. Yeah, I I, I agree. Like, with, I agree with you. I just I just hate that. I mean, if you're a watch dealer, if you're a successful watch dealer, why would you want to? If anything, take that watch, put it away, keep it for yourself. No, I think listen, I think I think customers were legitimately looking for them. Like big fans of the of this of the of Right. It's one it's one, one thing to stuff. go out there and try to find one for a client if you have a yeah, follow on one, pretty right? Much, I don't think people were buying it for stuff. No, but, but, really no, but so. then but then you start looking at some of these listings on eBay and Chrono and you see these uh, things up there for some ridiculous amount the ridiculous amounts of money. That that's them fishing. That's just them simply putting a crazy price in fishing. Possibly, possibly. Look, uh, let's face it. Hugo Diego Maradona was not something that ever sold over list. Right. Neither any of the Kobe Bryant's due to the fact that Hublo makes way too many limited yeah. editions. And, uh, yeah, they were popular. People bought them, but it was not something that ever went crazy over list. You know, so, again... I, when I saw those listings of Corona 24, I literally wanted to send them a message just be like, really? Like, yeah. like have you no shame type of thing? Yeah. You know, it's just, I don't I don't get that. Anyway. I think there's a grace period that needs to go by before, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like a certain yeah. grace period, otherwise. And if I, if, like, I were, if I were to sell that Hublot, 
I'd probably just put it in auction. I wouldn't want to put up a listing on my website for let's say sixty thousand dollars. Auction is a great idea. Yeah, actually. auction is yeah. probably the one. And and I'll, I'll I'll I would do one even better. I'd probably put it in auction, and I would maybe take the proceeds and donate it to a charity that Kobe used to support yep, or a charity of his sure. family's choice. You know, his family has money, so you know I'm sure there would yep. there's a charity certain that they could probably identify. Uh, let's see. Let's talk about uh, story time, right? Recent purchases, losses, things you regret buying, things we wish we would have bought. What you got? Zero regrets this time. Really? It's been a good couple of weeks. You must have bought and sold over a hundred Rolexes in the last a two lot, weeks. A lot of them. It's I just mean, like raining Rolex. <laughs> it's raining Rolex like crazy, and uh, Adrian is just you know, Adrian, Adrian is going for easy money this last two weeks. That's and, right, listen. And easy money for obviously the company and himself as well, but. Uh, He's just, every day, he walks into my office, like, I'm gonna need you to send 70 here and 50 here, what'd you buy, Rolex? And after about five times, I stopped asking him. I was like, let me guess, you bought some more Rolexes. And they're going in and out, in and out. I think uh, you managed to go through pretty much every color of the new OPs. I, yeah. th I think we have a red one downstairs still. Yeah. The which coral actually, 36. it's coral or red. Coral red, yeah. I actually like it. Yeah. I like it live better than I liked it on pictures. Like when they first came out with the funky colors, my initial reaction was the Tiffany, right? Yeah. The turquoise. Uh, the yellow I thought would be pretty cool. but It the, is cool. But the red, the red is actually really cool in person. Agreed. I, 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 I thought it when, when they first released it, I thought it was just a big gimmick. I was like, what are these colors for watching? But they look but, cool. But actually when they come in person, they, yeah. they got some personality, I got to say. Here's a shitty story. Guess what? It involves another loss and it involves Richard Mille. It seems like every story we've told so far, somewhere, somehow, we misplaced Richard Mills. This is the biggest potential loss that this company would have taken if I lost these Richard Mills. Las Vegas show, IWJG. It was uh, it was one of those shows where we have the IWJG show back to back with JCK and the Antique show. It's in May, three shows in a row. We're usually in Vegas for two weeks. We're going back to the times where we had 30 Richard Mills, 40 Richard Mills in stock, right? I mean, we had ridiculous amounts of Richard Mills in stock. We came to the show, we had about 60 pieces. RM11s, RM1102. Oh, it's a long time ago. This is a long time ago. We're talking about a time where these things were trading around 100 grand. Well, at the end of the show, I'm like a I'm, I'm like the guy that likes to pack. So I'm the guy that I won't let anybody touch my merch. So I like to pack everything. I know where every watch goes. I'm You're just, a very good packer, by the way. I know. I'm anal. I'm super <laughs> anal when it comes. So they call me the packing. They call me the packing Nazi. So it, it is what it is. So what I also pride myself in is my visual memory, right? Like I can meet a guy and three minutes later I'll forget what his name was. But when I pack something, I have such a good visual memory. I can literally tell you which bin, which watch was in, and which tray. As we pack on, from the one show, that very same day, that merchandise gets transferred to the antique show where we unpack everything, put everything in a safe, and so on and so forth. As I'm unpacking at the antique show, all of a sudden, the cold sweat breaks through, and I was like, shit, I don't remember packing Richard Mills. The minute I opened up the first bin, mind you, we've traveled like eight to 10 bins, right? The jewelry and watches a lot of bins. And after I opened up the first bin, I'm realizing I don't remember packing those Richard Mills. And Gary goes to your dad, goes to he's like, well, don't panic, you still have eight bins. I'm like, no, no, you don't understand. I don't remember packing them. And if I don't remember packing them, that means I didn't pack them. Lo and behold, we go through eight bins. We're missing, not 11, 12 Richard Meals. At the time, cost on them. There was a couple of terms on there. Cost at the time was close to $2 million. And I'm like, shit. I start going through, I start going through, and I'm like, okay. So those watches, we didn't keep them out in the showcase. We had them hidden in the safes, because we get a safe at the trade show. So I remember these two cardboard boxes in the safe, visually, that's where they were, that's where I must have left them. Lo and behold, the trade show's already packed up. That was the longest two and a half days of my life. We called IWG right away, uh, and what they ensured is when they were unpacking the safes, every safe has a number so they knew which safe we had. Lo and behold, they open up the safes, two cardboard boxes with $2 million worth of Richard Meals. I don't know why you don't play the lottery more often. He is inherently a very lucky guy, knock on wood. Yeah, not going to win. As we say, he's always always winning some type of uh, prize wherever we are. Uh, yeah. You know. Um, anyway, the last thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing a video reaction. And that mm. video reaction is going to be on this tiny little mad Irishman named Nico from Pride and Pinion. A new guy on a block on YouTube that kind of took YouTube by storm. He's funny. He's hilarious. So let's, uh, let's do that. Laptop, please. Nico, and I guess what you guys did is you put a little scissor together with best moments from his previous videos. Let's see what you got. You can tell a lot about a person when you look at someone's wrist. I'm just going to give you my honest opinion. I'm not a big fan of customizing watches. Keep a watch original. I love his accent. 
love the accent <laughs> and this guy the way he dresses is like it's not he's not us he's not t-shirts and jeans guy. like bums around he's, here <laughs> yeah we look like bums in comparison to him this is a ap royal oak chronograph offshore with a army blue rubber strap i mean this is rapper type of style like he is 60 year old rapper no, this <laughs> comes with an alligator strap um, he's making fun of the worst because it oh. will destroy <laughs> the the, uh, the alligator so you destroy an alligator strap when you swim what the fuck? What is the natural habitat of a f what an alligator? You <laughs> now that you can activate this and press this one, it stops the second hand. It was already going. <laughs> Did you just hear what he said? This guy knows f all about watches. All right, I got to defend producer Michael. He's a good customer. He's a friend, uh, and I will tell you, I agree with him. He knows a f all about watches. He likes them. He, uh, he likes them for what they are. He doesn't really care about the nuts and bolts, but he is right. What he referred to as a continuous, as a stop seconds, that's actually the continuous seconds of the watch. Yeah. And the big second hands is actually the chronograph. chronograph and that's, yeah. hence the f all reaction. But his, all. his reaction is amazing. No, you dick. That's your fucking second hand. It's got nothing to do with your stopwatch. That is your actual second hand. <laughs> yeah, the personality on this kid, though. He's great. It's amazing. The left sub dial is your actual second hand. You can't measure all with that, just saying. Fuck all has got to be one of all. <laughs> What's yeah. going to be one of favorite yeah. English slash Irish expressions? I didn't even know that that was an expression. Fully blinged out. Patek. I can't say what I want because that's politically not correct, but he destroys this in 5711. This is like. You see this Rembrandt painting? You <laughs> Rembrandt? You just grab your dick out of your fucking. <laughs> I've said it before and I'm gonna agree with him that, you know. Uh, to whatever floats your boat, like we don't sell uh, bus, down. bus ounce as they call them, right? Uh, uh, we do on a wholesale level. You never see us sell those watches retail because we look. How many times have we uh, somebody offered us a fifty-seven eleven, let's say rose gold, fully diamonded out, and we'd yeah. pay less money for that than we would for uh, you know one that doesn't have aftermarket diamonds. The aftermarket diamonds tend to ruin watches, ruin their value. And uh, I'm gonna have to agree with him to say that that watch does get ruined. But at the same token, I'll say that hey. Whatever floats your boat. Uh, I don't really know much about the mechanisms because Patek is not, you know, my favorite. Mechanisms? Mechanism is not a word that a watch collector should be using. I mean, I'm not saying that you need to know everything about movements and shit, but call it mechanisms. What are you talking about? Well, then... Bicycle or what's it called? <laughs> it's called a movement. Caliber 324, just say. But don't portray that you're a watch expert. Nico, he's not a watch expert, Nico. He's yeah. a watch collector. He likes shiny yeah. things. This is a sky dweller. This is the big boy rover. I'm passing this immediately because this is unacceptable. <laughs> this is a Rolex <laughs> sky dweller that you literally fucked in the ass. Sky dweller, two-tone Rolex. Who are you kidding? That's not 80,000 US dollars. That's a two-tone. Golden steel sky dweller, $15,000. You threw a few diamonds on. It's probably worth $10,000. <laughs> I guess this is more of the same where, yeah. you know, I agree I agree with it. One of the things I've always done on my channel is I always told it like it is. And I think this guy takes it to the next level. In fact... I think it's the accent that does it. Well, the accent... It's hard for you to be I, I, mean, funny. I mean, he drops an app bomb every other word. And yeah. you know what? I'm, I'm going to be... Can I be that out honest with you? I wish I did that. I just... I kept my channel a little more PG for various reasons because you know, I, I'm aware that sometimes kids can be watching and things of that nature, but this guy's doing exactly what I do, but in a much more colorful way. This yes. is money down the drain and bullshit. I'm gonna agree with that with that there. Money down the drain is definitely... Who's saying AP? My honeycomb said... I think I paid like maybe 55000 60000 for this watch a minute ago. This guy literally has been penetrated from behind without being kissed first. <laughs> if you've got 60 grand, uh, has been definitely taken from the backside before he's actually being kissed. Yo, Ian, you gotta take note of this editing, Ian. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> That's ridiculous. Don't ever destroy the god of all gods, Casio. <laughs> you destroyed a 20 pounds Casio with diamonds. <laughs> Mate! No! Of course, you know, a lot of people are wearing Patek Philippe's. I just find this so hard because, again, I see a 5976G anniversary Patek Philippe Nautilus. I literally cringe when yeah. I see the anniversary piece getting literally destroyed. You know, the market, on, the, the market on that watch is 350 today with yeah. diamonds. I don't know if I'm paying 250 I don't it's even know if I'm paying 200 It's literally the perfect watch for me, yeah. personally. This box, this box is fake. This is not a real Rolex box. You see how that crown is centered? Centered wrong. This is a made in China, nothing against China. 
I actually he says I actually, China I, like Trump. China. I actually caught that. That is a fake boxy right. That watch wasn't born with that bezel, neither with that dial. Neither. <laughs> There's no Rolex that's ever born with that bezel. <laughs> Jacob gave Cristiano Ronaldo a watch. Or shall we say a UFO? I don't even know what this is, but it's the biggest piece of sh I've ever seen. And I am sure to say that this even belongs below the Hublot category. It's as wow. we know of Cristiano Ronaldo, it needs to be big. So what did Jacob the jeweler do? He put a f***ing pancake on his <laughs> fill it up with f***ing diamonds. And in this case, it is a <laughs> Market. Speaking of Dude, Jacob and Carl, what do you think of that pancake oh. on his wrist? <laughs> I'll never look at that watch without thinking of a pancake ever again. <laughs> that was a pretty shitty watch. Like if I was Jacob, I would have given him an astronomia or something. Not that. It's just oh. a huge ass <laughs> mother <laughs> rim on his f***ing wrist. To be fair, you can read five different time zones on this watch in one go because you really need that. <laughs> yes, you need five time zones on your wrist at one time. <laughs> this guy is wearing, oh my God, that is fake. Rolex has never produced this piece of shit. Just look at it, it's a lady's watch. It is not a real, it's not made by Rolex. What the fuck accent was that? <laughs> uh, Post Malone. He's got a sick collection, actually. Does he? Yeah. Oh like my Rainbow. God. That is, that's not Rainbow Daytona. That watch. It's only produced a real few times a year. Like, people are paying a quarter of a million for that watch alone. Like, True I've, story. I've only seen one in real life ever. That's not classy. That is not classy. It's just ridiculously chavy and in your face. Not classy, but. Not classy. Incredible. So it's not classy. Not classy. It's not classy. RM12. And this is one of That's my classy. favorites. And it's so light. RM12, the lightest tourbillon in the world. Like, I mean, that watch is a complete and other insane engineering. That is not an RM12. Engineered watch. Like, it's not my style. I'm not At all. a big, big what is fan it? of it's RM. A, R, it's an RM27. Richard Meals. Oh, one. Yeah. Yeah. Nico, you don't know who your Richard Meals. <laughs> That's Sorry, an RM27. It's no cool We're still friends. 2702. 2701R27. <laughs> well, but um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you clo if you don't look at him, he's definitely. He's great. He's great for he's, the industry. If you look, if you if you look at him, he's definitely. What does he he's do? Is he, is he a collector? Or is no, he he's, he's he's now he's actually a dealer. Well, remind me never to offer him a bust down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Yo, you want to with him? You want to you want to yeah. send him a bust down yeah. Rolex? <laughs> We're gonna get his address. We're gonna eat. We're gonna mail him a buzz down Rolex and see what his reaction is. I gotta tell you, he's raw. He's in your face, yeah. and but he does what I do. He he tells people exactly how it is. But I think uh, a lot of entertainment value there. Yeah, right. For sure. So I'm gonna tell I'm gonna tell Nico. Very very entertaining. Keep doing what you're doing. Cheers, uh, Nico. I couldn't I couldn't do what I couldn't do what you do. I just I can't drop an F bomb every 40 seconds. I think what you should do is what is uh, put a pillow under a seat. You're not that tall. We can see that, right? Maybe prop him up a little bit higher. On the set. Him or me? Not you, him. Oh. <laughs> Nico, grab a pillow, prop yourself up, make yourself look taller. All right, camera adds a few pounds. Hit the gym, for sure. All right, I can. Well, let's see what you're rocking. Yeah, and so if you're I, talking shit, if you're talking shit on watches, at least you gotta be presentable. Well, he, he, usually, he usually wears a 5990. I don't know. If oh, he does he? Nice. Yeah, he well, usually wears a 5990. But he's he's bought and sold some pretty premier classy, vintage things. He says. What is it? Classy. What are you saying? Classy. Classy. I wonder if us it's talk, not classy. You know how he sounds funny to us. Yeah. I wonder if we sound funny to him. For we probably sure. do. Our English definitely probably sounds funny to you. I mean, mixed in with a hint of a Russian slash Brooklyn accent, I'm sure we sound funny as shit. But Nico, definitely entertaining. Definitely got some laughs out of it. Let me tell you something. I don't watch a lot of watch YouTube channels out there. In fact, not religiously, but your videos are it. And recently, yep. my boys turned me on to your TikTok. That's even funnier. You guys check out Nico. Definitely worth a watch. And I'm not surprised why you climbed up in subscribers so quick and so fast because your yeah. stuff is definitely entertaining. I gotta say, definitely the second best uh, watch YouTuber out there. Thank you. Number one is me. <laughs> Adrian, you want your own channel? No, good, man. <laughs> So I'm gonna leave this off with a question to you, Adrian. Do you foresee the hype on the hype? The hype on the hype. Yeah. Stopping at any time soon. I'd say adjusting. I think maybe it's gonna, I, I don't know if it's, again, unless some type of global economic catastrophe happens, I don't see things really taking a deep dive like they did in March, let's say suddenly i think there will be an adjustment but i still do think that the markets will remain hot
I do. I'm going to tell you that we won't see an adjustment for a long time. Maybe even a long time. And I'll tell I you agree. why. Because people are out there are putting money into trophy assets. And what we do for a living and what we sell for a living are indeed trophy assets. And I think this trend is going to continue. It's going to continue for a while. And unless something drastic like an 08 crisis goes yeah. down, I don't see this market cooling off anytime soon. Now, this doesn't mean you guys should go out there and invest into watches. No, buy what you like first and foremost. These things are not investments. Same time, I don't think. But it's not a, I don't think it's a bad place to park money. Right now. Watch it right now? Just these type of trophy assets, be it, be it high-end yeah. jewelry pieces, high-end watches, hot stuff. The downside is you're going to pay through the roof. The great thing about watches, I will say, so let's scratch out the whole investment term because I don't, they're investments for us because it's our business, right? Exactly. Um, however, as an expensive toy, I would say overall, pound for pound, much safer than a car. Beast of sh out of a car. I don't know what else there is like watches out there. Why? Because you can put in a duffel bag and take them wherever the hell you want. Millions of dollars in a duffel bag. Car, you need a garage. You cannot bring your Ferrari into a boardroom during a meeting. You cannot do that. So many people have gotten into it because they're so easy to handle. You know, they're very expensive. There's money to be made. There's not a lot of storage. You don't need storage for, for watches. You know, it depends how big you get, but a small safe will do the trick. Because any watch you can call a multitude of dealers and you get a check written on the spot or a wire or whatever it might be. You call 300 dealers. You can call, you, when you call you car dealers, label, gone. yeah, and or yeah, car no. dealers, it's, uh, you know, you pull up in a Ferrari, not every dealership is going to want to write a check for that Ferrari. Yeah, you can put an auction, but it takes time. I think instant liquidity, I think nothing out there beats watches. No art, no fine wines, no antiques, no antique guns. Speaking of which, I didn't bring any guns to the show this time. Yeah. Next show. If you do want to touch upon one investment type of point, it's how quickly you can, how liquid your investment is, right? You, yeah. Just like you can sell off stocks right. instantaneously, it's, you can sell off watches. And I don't think you can do that with cars. I don't think you can I do can. that with art. I don't think you can do it with a, a lot of these other trophy assets that are out there. Well, yep. one more drink. Guys, thank you for tuning in once yes. again. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. As always, shoot me an email. Shoot Adrian an email. Uh, let us know what else you'd like to see discussed on these shows. Uh, let us know uh, what you want us to talk about because we can talk for days and this is what makes this show a lot of fun. We'll see you guys next week. Cheers.